Have you always wanted to read classic literature but you skipped it because it seemed hard? Maybe one of your friends recommended Pride and Prejudice and you looked at it and looked at the first line. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. And you thought, back to Harry Potter. Ooh. Sorry, book. First of all, know that you are not alone. A lot of people come into our store and they say, man, I've always really wanted to read Jane Austen, but it just seems hard. But we're here to help you along. So first of all, don't be afraid to mark up your text. Uh, you may be a really messy reader, like me, who writes, draws, highlights, is crazy in general. Or you may be a really pristine reader, like Bethany, whose copy of Edenbrook has never seen the ink of a pen. Both are completely valid ways to read a book. In fact, there's no wrong way to read a book except for skipping to the last line because only monsters do that. Whatever way you choose, you can take notes. Bethany might use sticky notes or her notes app on her phone and I might, you know, draw in the margins. Act like you're a kid and you have no idea what any of these words mean. You don't know what the word pedantic means? Well, Google it and make a note for yourself. With enough practice, this will break down the language used in classic literature and work its way into your actual vocabulary. Ha ha ha. Ah yes, I found the entire countenance of his overall personality very supercilious. Ha 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 ha. Also, don't be afraid to take your time. Uh, did you find that one scene with Mr. Collins particularly challenging? Go slow, read and reread. Mark up your text. Summarize each paragraph in your own words. And then he read to them how young girls should behave? <sighs> That's not gonna fly with Lizzie. Still having trouble? One of the great things about classics is that there are plenty of resources online. Don't be afraid to utilize Sparknotes to tell you what that chapter actually meant after reading it. Um, or plenty of YouTube videos probably exist breaking down your favorite books. There's also lots of like adaptations, different clips, I know Pride and Prejudice has like a billion adaptations, so if you're reading this book in particular, you can definitely find a clip of that scene you just read. Sometimes reading aloud to friends can help you get a better understanding. Hey Bethany. Be Bethany. Hmm? Mr. Collins just proposed to her and it was ridiculous. Hey Bethany. Now he said, I have often observed how little young ladies are interested by a book of serious stamps. Is that not gross? Hey, Bethany. What? Now Jane's going to marry Mr. Collins. Eey. I know it may seem like a homework assignment you never wanted to complete in school, but if you practice these reading techniques, over time, you will be able to effortlessly read uh, through one classic to the next, except for Hawthorne. We don't talk about Hawthorne. Oh, yeah, it's, it's chapter one and we're still talking about a door. Still the door. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Probably the best resource of all is your local independent bookstore, chock full of nerds that just can't wait to talk to you about your favorite classics. At least I know we are at Patchouli Joe's Books and Indulgences. No matter what you like to read, Patchouli Joe's Books and Indulgences has got you covered. You can go online to order your favorite classics at patchoulijoesbooks.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon. Nay, cried Bingley. This is too much to remember at night of foolish things that were said in the morning. And yet, upon my honor, I believe what I said to myself was true. What do you think of that, Belle? She doesn't like it. <laughs>